I clean house. You somebody? <laughs> yeah, I'm somebody. I'm somebody that's trying to get some work done. So please clean house someplace else, huh? <laughs> what kind somebody, you? I'm married to Mrs. Williams. I'm her husband. The lady that pays you, she gets the money from me. Hello. Hello. <laughs> if you don't mind, I'd like to get some work done, okay? It's all right. It's all right. Thank you. <laughs> I have got to play the piano. Okay, you play. You no bother me. <laughs> yeah, but you bother me. Okay. Mrs. I quit. <laughs> Oh, you can't. I you just can't. Go. No, no, you just can't. Mrs. Polakow, now please come back. Now tell me what, what happened? What's wrong? What is it? Him. <laughs> I bothered him. Danny, what did you say to her? What have you done? What do you mean, what have I done? I'm trying to get some work done. I've got to get an arrangement out. And I just told her to be quiet. Oh, Danny, how could you? How could I? <laughs> Mrs. Polakow, Mr. Williams is very sorry. Now, really, is Danny. You tell her that you're sorry. Go on. She makes the noise, interrupts my work. One minute. What are you, some kind of nut or something? Mrs. Polakow. I go. Oh, no, please, Mrs. Polakow. Mr. Williams is very sorry. Now, really, he is. Sorry for what? All I said to her was, you bother me. He said it again. <laughs> I go. Oh, no, Mrs. Polakow. I'll tell you what, you go out into the kitchen and straighten things up out there, and in the meantime, I'll straighten up Mr. Williams. Go ahead. Danny. Danny, what are you trying to do to me? What? Well, don't you realize what a jewel that woman is? Why, she's only the most popular cleaning woman in town. Why do you like that? She's the woman that Mrs. Ed Sullivan stole from Mrs. Gary Moore before she lost her to Mrs. Arthur Godfrey after she walked out on Mrs. Perry Como. Oh? And how were we so lucky to get her to do a guest spot for us? <laughs> I just told you, she walked out on Mrs. Perry Como. Why? Because Perry brought Rosemary Clooney home to rehearse a duet on cleaning day. <laughs> the mad fool. <laughs> Don't make a joke out of it. It's very serious. Oh, come on. I was just wondering, maybe if I made her some nice cheese blintzes, that might make her happy. You're going to make cheese blintzes for the cleaning woman? I beg you to make them for me. You always say, oh, it's too much fuss and bother. I haven't got time, but for her, you're going to make them. Danny, I've no intention of losing that jewel of a woman, at least not until Louise gets back, so I do not want you to antagonize her. Hmm. Maybe I ought to check into a hotel for the duration. Oh, darling, that's so thoughtful of you. <laughs> You smoke that? What? Make all over ashes? No, I don't make all over ashes. I'm very neat. You'll never find my ashes around the house. Yeah, he hides them under the rug. <laughs> you go back to Albert, huh? I go now get furniture polished, but you be careful. I want Mrs. Williams to find clean house. Okay. Hello? Oh, 
are you? I I'm Janine. I'm here to help Mrs. Polakow. Oh. So! <laughs> Better come when work is almost finished. Well, I had to stay after school. Stay after school or go sit by Jukes box, listen to Elvis Pretzel. <laughs> it's not Pretzel, it's Presley, and I wasn't at a jukebox. You say. Okay, you come 4.15, your pay start 4.15, understand? Yes, ma'am. Okay, I go by furniture polish, you start dust here. Go, start work. <laughs> Could I come in now? Okay, don't get ashes on floor. Okay. Well, now's your chance, Daddy. Chance for what? You wanted to play the piano. Oh, yeah, I could get this number finished while she's out. I, uh, I hope my piano playing doesn't disturb you. Oh, not me. I dig music. You dig it? Oh, that's good. I gotta get this number ready for my arrangers before Tinier Rosie gets back. She doesn't appreciate my theatrical talents on cleaning days. Uh, what do you do, sing or something? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, mo mostly or something. Uh, well, what do you sing? Look, honey, I'd like to converse with you, but I'd like to finish this before... She gets back, okay? Dig you. Clamsville. Clamsville. Very good. Daddy. What, honey? What's Clamsville? Clamsville is a small place in Scotland where they make oysters. <laughs> you go and have some cookies and milk, huh? Okay. Fine. Oh, how I miss you tonight. Miss you our lights alone. <laughs> oh, how I need you. <laughs> Tonight. <laughs> uh, what's the matter? You know, I just caught on. Huh? I bet you're not really a singer at all, are you? Uh, how'd I give myself away? When you started to sing. <laughs> well, you're not a Paul Anka, Mr. Williams. I'm not. Oh, but you can't help it, because you don't have a sound. I don't have a sound? What makes you such an expert? What are you, a veteran of flying 2,000 hours over a jukebox? <laughs> well, I sang with some of the best bands in the country. Uh, Les Brown, Harry James, and Spencer Hagen. You've sung with those bands? Where? In my shower. <laughs> you had the whole band in your shower? <laughs> No, I buy all the records, and I listen to the instrumentals. Oh. That way I can sing and get a lot of practice. I'm going to be in show business one day, mm. I hope. Doesn't everybody. <laughs> uh, would you like to hear me sing with the Spencer Hagen Orchestra? Well, I'll tell you, dear. Uh, Spencer Hagen, that's a very big orchestra, and we got such a small shower. <laughs> Silly. I've got the record right here. You have? You wouldn't mind if I sang, would you? Oh, no. Go right ahead. I mean... You're sure now? Oh, sure. You, you owe it to Paul Anka. I mean... <laughs> Say it now 
make a sound. Give me that. You sing, I'll dust. <laughs> Just from the lungs? Gee, Mr. Helper, that's my natural voice. That's right, Charlie. Hey, let's book her for a few weeks in the club. What do you say, huh? Yeah. You know, maybe we can get some of the college crowd to come over. What do you mean, some of the college crowd? We'll get all of them. <laughs> the tables down at Morris will be empty. <laughs> you mean you'd give me a job, Mr. Helper? Absolutely, honey. I'm gonna give you a nice contract. I'm gonna well, give you a nice what's salary. With the contract? She's a minor. She can't sign that contract. You gotta have her parents sign it. You're right. I forgot. Who do I talk to, your father or your mother? Well, there's only my mother. She's a widow. Mm. Well, I'm sure she'll sign it for you, honey. Well, I don't know if she'll let me do it or not. Well, let you do it or not? What, is she some kind of a money hater? <laughs> Speaking of money, what is this? Huh? You thief? What? $75 a week? Come on, there's a digit missing. Get that finger away or you'll have a digit missing. <laughs> Charlie, add a one. No, oh, come on, Danny, huh? Add a one. Oh, Danny, I mean... Charlie, add a one. Okay, here, I put a one. Now, there, yeah, we made it $76 a week. Oh. <laughs> I, I tell you, Kathy, I haven't been excited about a piece of talent like this in a long time. She's so young and yet she's so professional. You should have heard her. She's just wonderful. Charlie, just flip. We're all flipping. And, and we're gonna book her in the Copa. She's great. What a piece of talent. I like to help young talent when, they, when they've got it, you know? Yeah. Everybody but your son. What? Why don't you help me get a job in show business? Oh, come on, Russell. You can't sing. The last time you sang, we had an apartment full of dogs. <laughs> Daddy, you don't have to be able to sing to be in show business. They use a lot of kids in television. I could get a job. Doing what? I can act. Rusty, forget it. Take my word for it. You can't act. <laughs> Gee whiz. Just because I'm your son, you've got no respect for me. I don't say that. Strangers come into the house, people you never saw before in your life, and, and you get all excited about them, but me, your own flesh and blood, it, it's get lost, kid. Don't you think I've got any feelings, Daddy? Don't you think I want my old father to appreciate me? Maybe I haven't got any talent, but how do you know? You never even give me a chance to show you. You say you love me, but you never do anything to prove it. Sometimes I wish I was dead. Son? Gee, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to hurt his feelings. Oh, I'm amazed. 
Well, Daddy still think I can't act? Why? <laughs> Like that phony. Like father, like son. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, oh, Mrs. Bullockow. Why, you weren't supposed to come back until tomorrow. I came to talk about Janine. Now, look, if it's about pulling her off the job yesterday, that was my fault. I didn't let her finish her work. I took her over to see Mr. Helper. That girl won't be helping you anymore. She's going to have a career of her own. Why you give to Janine? You had no right to take this contract from her. She's supposed to give it to her mother to sign. You should... Holy Toledo. Don't tell me you're her mother. Yes. You're really her mother? Yes. Where'd she pick up that honeysuckle you all accent from the south of Poland? Before New York, we live in Memphis 10. Oh. <laughs> Honey, why didn't you tell me she was Janine's mother? Well, I didn't know it either. You never said anything about that, Mrs. Polakow. Why didn't Janine say something? I not let her say something. Why not? Is something for Janine be proud, have mother who scrub floor, work in house? Oh, well, it's certainly nothing for her to be ashamed of. It's perfectly honest work. Sure, it's honest work. But I want Janine be fine lady. I want she go to college. All her life I see Janine get education. Not be like mama. Good for nothing but to work with hands. Hands like these. So I save money. Make Janine help on jobs so that we save more money to pay to go to college. Oh, well, that's wonderful, Mrs. Polakow, but wouldn't this contract be a tremendous help to both of you? Well, sure. The money she can earn at the Copa will give her a fine education. No, it's not for my Janine. Why not? Always is trouble making her go to school. Always she want only singing, sing, roll and rock round jukes box. But I make her study. I make her learn. Then you come with this, you spoil everything. I mean, now she doesn't want to go to college? Now she don't even want to finish high school. She say, Mama, I make plenty money now. You don't have to work. So I don't need education. Mr. Williams, she wants to stop school right now, today. Danny, you just can't let this happen. This is terrible. You better tear up that contract. No, don't tear up. Please don't tear up. If you tear up, she's going to hate me. Hate you? Yes. If you tear up, she's going to hate me all the rest of her life. Should I want she go to college, I want she be fine lady. But most of all, I want my daughter not to hate me. You got pen? Mrs. Polkow. Please. Mrs. Polkow, you sure you don't want me to tear this contract up? If you tear up, she sing for somebody else. It's better she sing for you who have nice, clean house. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Charlie. Hi, Hello, Captain. Janine. Well, Danny, looks like we're in business. Yeah. Hi, Janine. Hi, Mr. Williams. Janine told me uh, her mother signed the contract and left it with you. Yeah, she signed it. I got it right here. So how come you don't tell me? Hmm? I mean, after all, I am one of the parties to the contract. And when you're one of the parties, the least you can do is get invited to the party. <laughs> <laughs> don't get excited, Charlie. Just relax. Everything I'm relaxed. I'm relaxed. Let me see the contract. Yeah, huh? see the contract. Yeah. Honey, I think uh, Mrs. Polakow ought to be here for this. Would you call her? All right. 
Right. Wait, what do we need a crowd for? What is this, a Geneva conference? Is <laughs> no, it's just a big moment in Janine's life, and I think her mother ought to share it with her. Oh, Miss Spalakal, I, I wanted you to hear this. Now, Janine, dear, this contract, I'm sure, is, uh, well, it's like a dream come true for you. Dream come true, everything. Thanks. Certainly will afford you a great opportunity. Great opportunity. And, uh, Mr. Helper is paying you a very handsome salary. Handsome salary? Who that hurts right here, you know? <laughs> and with a little luck, this contract could open the door to a very glamorous career for you. And yet, my advice to you is, don't take it. Don't take, don't take, why? Charlie, please sit down. Huh? Are you serious, Mr. Williams? I'm very serious, dear. You are out of your mind, Danny. Did your nose get too heavy for your head? Sit down. <laughs> I don't understand, Mr. Williams. Why don't you want me to take the contract? Look, Janine, you have a wonderful voice. You sing great. But how many hours in a day can you sing? One hour, two hours a day? The rest of the time, when you open your mouth, it'll be to speak. In the years to come, it'll be to speak to your husband, perhaps, or your children, your neighbors, members of your community. And when you do speak, it better make sense what you say. Sense that comes from learning. Darling, an education is a very important thing, especially in these highly progressive times. There's room only for the educated today. Never before in the history of the world has education been so important as it is now. And the entire fate of the world depends upon the education of our young people. Now, I'm not saying that all of you kids are going to become nuclear physicists. But you shouldn't throw away the opportunity to learn. This chance may not come your way again. And your voice, your talent, that's God-given. You'll always have that. And even if you decide after it's all over that you want to be in show business, and education isn't necessarily a handicap, don't throw away this chance, honey. Give your brain the, the opportunity to grow to the size of your voice. Now, you can still take this contract if you want. But before you do, I'd, I'd like to call your attention to another country. This one is between two people, just you and me. And in it, I guarantee to finance your education all through college on one condition, that after you graduate, if you still decide you want to be in show business, you have to come back to Mr. Helper and me. Now, the choice is yours. You take whichever contract you want. Mr. Williams, you are a good man. <laughs> oh, Charlie, what's the matter with you? Don't be a sore head. Who's sore? I mean, after that talk, I'm so ashamed of myself. I'm going to sign up for night school. <laughs> <laughs>